Hi everyone, our subject today is abnormal eye movements in pediatrics. Abnormal eye movement may occur as a benign finding or in association with the other visual or ocular problems. They may, however, indicate an acquired, more severe underlying neurological problem. The history should include an accurate description of the eye movement, age of onset, and associated sign and symptom. Specifically, inquire about visual, visual acuity, color vision, night vision, photophobia, abnormal head movement, tinnitus, and oscillopsia. Oscillopsia is a sensation of movement or swinging of the visual field. Careful examination should yield an accurate description of the eye movements and other associated signs and symptoms. Eye movement should be initially classified as rhythmic, swinging, pendulum-like, or non-rhythmic. The association of the any non-ocular muscle movement should be discerned. Nystagmus is defined as repetitive rhythmic oscillation of one or both eyes. A wave form, direction, amplitude, frequency, and velocity of oscillations further help to classify the pattern of nystagmus. It should be note, noted whether the movements are symmetric or asymmetric between the two eyes. Some patterns have diagnostic implication. For example, vertical nystagmus is associated with posterior fossa lesion. Some drug-induced nystagmus may associate occasionally be vertical. Frequently in neuroimaging and sometimes more specialized study, electroretinogram, visual effect, potential test are necessary to rule out underlying etiologies. How to approach to a child with the abnormal eye movement after performing history and physical examination, visual acuity, and eye exam? Rhythmic eye movement present? If it is not present, this may include obcyclonus, multidirectional, spontaneous movement, differential diagnosis, encephalitis, hydrocephalus, brainstem, or cerebellar disorder, or neuroblastoma or may be ocular dysmetria, overshoot, undershoot of the eye on the rabbit fixation, this is maybe cerebellar dysfunction, or this may be ocular flutter, horizontal oscillation with the forward gaze blinking, this is maybe cerebellar disease, hydrocephalus, central nervous system, neoplasm, or maybe ocular bobbing, downward jerk from primary gaze remain for few seconds and then drift back. This is pontine disease or pontine tumor. If the eye, mov uh, eye movement is rhythmic, so uh, non-ocular muscle group involved, if it is involved the non-ocular muscle group with rhythmic eye movement, this may be ocular myoclonus, to and fro pendular oscillation of the eyes with the synchronous non-ocular muscle movement, cerebellar damage, damage to the midbrain, pons, or medulla. If the non-ocular muscle group are not involved, this is nystagmus, either acquired nystagmus or congenital. Acquired nystagmus present before the age of six months, differential diagnosis, intracranial neoplasm, CNS infection, CNS trauma, encephalopathy, multiple sclerosis, labyrinthitis, spasmus nitus, drug medication, phenytoin, alcohol, sedative, vitamin B12 deficiency, or normal nystagmus. Sorry, acquired after the age of six months, congenital before the age of six months visual impairment or ocular defect if it is not present this is congenital idiopathic motor nystagmus 
If it is yes, a visual impairment present, present or ocular defect present, this is congenital, sensory nystagmus, albinism, an eye reader, uh, achromatopathia, congenital cataract, corneal opacity, anomalies, congenital macular lesion, congenital optic atrophy, glaucoma, livers, congenital amaurosis, congenital stationary night blindness. Ocular myoclonus uh, describes rhythmic oscillating eye movement accompanied by non-ocular movement of the soft palate, tongue, face, pharynx, larynx, and diaphragm. Congenital sensory nystagmus is commonly associated with the ocular abnormality that lead to visual impairment. It is most common type of nystagmus in infants. It generally occurs in children in the first six months of life and in children with congenital or perinatal vision defect. Neuroimaging to rule out a tumor is always recommended when the cause is not evident. Congenital idiopathic nystagmus typically appear in the first three months of life and it's associated with the compensatory head tilting. Uh, through physical examination, neuroimaging, and electrophysiologic study are usually necessary to rule out underlying ocular or neurologic disorder. Neurologic disorder must always be excluded as a cause of acquired nystagmus. Imaging should be considered to exclude intracranial neoplasm. Other etiologies include CNS infection, a trauma, encephalopathy, and demyelination disorder. Labyrinthinitis is often caused by viral illness and may be an infrequent complication of otitis media. Manifestation can include vertigo, ear pain, nausea, vomiting, hearing loss, and nystagmus. Spasmus neoternus is usually a benign condition that occurs as a combination of bilateral asymmetric nystagmus, head nodding, and torticollis in the first year of life. The etiology is unknown. It generally resolves by the age of three years without sequelae. Despite benign nature of the condition, neuroimaging is recommended to rule out the possibility of CNS neoplasm. Both children and adults can exhibit an occasional one to two beats of lateral nystagmus on gaze, on side gaze that is not considered significant. Thank you for your listening.